We're going to finish discussing real interest rate and real exchange rate and how they're connected in open, uh, in, in open economic uh, or oh, yeah, open economy markets. And what I want to consider here is a last case where we have a domestic economy that is viewed as a safe haven for investments. And this kind of also comes out of the 2007-2008 recession because we had a number of economies that were kind of deemed as safe havens where investors uh, investors really flew towards those safe havens. And in fact, this is basically the opposite of what we were just thinking about when we were thinking about, well, maybe you have a, a government that's a little unstable and it, it would cause uh, individuals to not want to invest in that economy. So. What are we talking about when we have a safe haven government? Well, this is, and, and I'll say that this is very, this is one of the views that a lot of economists take for the United States, or kind of that that is used to describe some of the things that can happen within the United States, or has been happening in the United States, because in essence, because the because the United States is so large, because it is because it is such a gigantic economic force, it is often viewed as a safe haven, and we see this kind of odd thing that even during the recession, even when the, the when the American economy was really blowing up and, and Lehman Brothers was, was going under and and uh, kind of demand was just falling off of a cliff for all types of goods, what we tended to see was kind of this paradoxical increase in individuals who are wanting to invest in, uh, or in essence, another way of saying that, we were seeing an increase in foreign capital um, coming in, foreign investment coming into the United States. And so what does that look like? Well, a government that is seen as a safe haven, you can see kind of, it's a little counterintuitive sometimes what will happen. So I've got the definition here for net capital outflow because this would again be a case where we're not talking about the, a change in the market for loanable funds that's driving this uh, to start off with. We're talking about a change in the net capital outflow. So what would this be? If your government is seen as a safe haven, if the domestic government is seen as a safe haven, well, then it's it's seen as secure. And in a time when things are very uh, kind of up in the air, you can see a lot of capital that would want to uh, go towards that secure or less risky location where maybe you you are uh, you are supported by that government. So what would this be? Well, we've got a purchase of domestic assets by foreign residents. We would have foreign individuals who would be wanting to purchase domestic assets because it is seen as a safe haven, because it is seen as maybe less risky, or um, maybe it's a uh, maybe counter cyclical or something like that. And so this component would be increasing. If this component is increasing, well then what we would be seeing is that net capital outflow, right, this would be kind of a, a higher negative and net capital outflow would be decreasing, right? We would actually see capital in inflowing into the country. And so what does this look like? Well, we would be seeing this shift right here to the left of net capital outflow. And so this would kind of be a shift, I'll just mark it like that, net capital outflow number two here, right? And that would be a shift here. What do we know? Well, we know that the supply over here is the supply of loanable funds, that's savings in the economy. We know that the demand is investment plus net capital outflow, right? And so what is that going to be? Well, uh, one of the things we would see here is if if this is kind of, if this is if this is shifting to the left, then we would also see this demand here shift to the left as well. And so I'm going to mark this here as demand Two, and that's going to bring us to this new equilibrium point. And this new equilibrium point would actually be a lower real interest rate. So we should see, right, kind of economics would tell us that if you're seen as a safe haven, that you would actually start to see a depressed real interest rate. You would start to see a lower real interest rate as a result of this net capital outflow uh, that is shifting to the left here. Uh, it basically is a, as a result of the purchase of domestic assets uh, from foreign residents, right? And so what would that actually go through? Well, if we kind of finish the analysis, this lower real interest rate should bring us down here. The lower real interest rate now that's marked in yellow, this brings us to this point here, which is now a lower supply of dollars on the, right? Kind of a lower supply of dollars, and I'll mark that as supply two, in the market for foreign currency exchange. Uh, what we've talked about before is that this would be forcing us towards a trade deficit, right? This would be kind of, if we're going to balance this out, this would be forcing us towards a trade deficit. And a trade deficit would mean that we would be, we would see an increase in imports, right? So we would, to balance this out, we would see an increase in imports. 
And how does that also look down here? Well, we would see this, right, as a result of a, of a decrease in the quantity of dollars here on the foreign exchange, foreign currency exchange. Uh, we would see the appreciation of the of those dollars that do remain, right? So the dollars that do remain, they appreciate, and we've got this increase in the real exchange rate. We would see an appreciation of the uh, of the dollar. In essence, the dollar could buy more foreign currency. One dollar could buy more foreign currency, and this would also be kind of a strong. Uh, as I've said before, this would also be kind of seen as a currency appreciation or maybe a strong dollar policy. And so you can kind of see how you get some counterintuitive results as well when we just follow through uh, and, and work through the analysis here. So I just wanted to work through this and, and see where we would see kind of a safe haven that would actually have a result in lowering the real interest rate from, uh, from kind of your previous equilibrium rate and would also result in increasing the exchange rate. Now this is Right, this has a number of. I don't say that this is good or bad. It has a number of different uh, effects. If you if you're taking your currency and, and you know going abroad, that that means that you can buy more of another currency. So so that's a good thing. But we can also think about how that really kind of pushes us towards more imports, which uh, kind of on the net. If we're thinking about right, y is equal to, and what do we think about here? Consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports and here net exports would be falling so so we might see kind of a depressed outcome or output as a result of that and so you could think about how these can kind of flow through in in, um, in a bit of a counterintuitive way that we could actually see um, we could actually see uh, um, in essence we could see capital inflow into the economy and that that would actually not necessarily help the economy when it comes to growth or when we think about some of the effects that that might have on real interest rate uh, or on the exchange rate.